Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Still on the C64s at the moment. Um, just something slightly different. Um, you can see this, I'll zoom in. It's a Nano Swinsid. So, is it? I think it's based on an App Mega 88 or something, is it? Um, tiny little uh, FPGA. Um, down there, got 32 megahertz crystal, a couple of jumpers. Uh, some caps and resistors and things and that's pretty much it. Um, I've had to stick this inside another socket um, just because it won't fit the, the, the pins there um, you know you'll damage you, you can potentially damage the, the, the pins in the SID socket it's very hard to get it in there so um, yeah put, putting it in another socket like that means that you've got you know socket pins going into the pins below but um, yeah so I'll give that a go now um, I've actually tried this previously I've got some reservations about this um, it's not 100% accurate in terms of its um, emulation um, but nonetheless I'll show you anyway and you can make up your own mind right so it's in there now you'll see there's a couple of jumpers on there uh, one of them the board is actually marked I think it says uh, set filter set board filter so you can actually put a switch to one of these jumpers or maybe both the jumpers and toggle between uh, you know effectively how it sounds you know between the two different types of SID the uh, 6581 or the uh, 8580 so that's quite a cool feature because you know I like to have both in the same system and single chip. But um, anyway, it's in there now. So I've switched it on. First thing you'll notice is you should hear it chime as it boots up. In fact, it didn't do it. Ah, oh, there you go. You hear that? That little ding. Uh, that was strange. Not sure why it didn't do it the first time. Maybe I just didn't notice it. Um, so I'll just set the tripod up here and we'll uh, yeah, get a couple of games uh, loaded and you can hopefully hear the sound. So this is Hyperball. I'm quite fond of the music on this so let's see what this sounds like. Let's see if I can tell any distinct difference. Sounding the same so far, but I'm hard pressed to tell the difference between that and the original suit. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. So uh, this is Ghouls and Ghosts. Let's see what this sounds like. Also music from by I think it's Tim Follin. He's produced some cracking tunes uh, for these 8-bit systems. Sounding the same so far. That's amazing. It really is. Yeah, again, I would go as so far to say it's almost indistinguishable from an actual SID. Let's start again because you get different music. They're 
on port, I think. Honestly, could not tell. Uh, there was a chance that there was one of these in the system, and you know, I, I don't know whether there is or not. I wouldn't be able to tell. Seriously, would not be able to tell. So they're not with this game. So I thought I'd give you Iridium a go. Uh, be interesting. This sounds like. Legendary Andrew Greybrook. Again, I'm not sure I could tell the difference between that and an original. Uh, I think that, that didn't sound quite the same actually though, that, that little sound though, your ship comes out of the hangar, whatever it is. If you've not seen this game before, you should check this out, it's a really good game. The one thing, um, I, I prefer this version, this is the best version in my mind. It might be alright on the Amiga or the SC, I don't know, I haven't tried it. Um, but versus the spectrum, this one's far easier because you can um, see the colour difference. You know, the colour differences help a little bit with uh, the obstacles like there's little black things in the middle that can crash into the middle. Watch the middle. Oh, I'm lying off me again. Yeah, there is to shoot all the ships, obviously, for a few, I don't know, a minute or two. And eventually, you'll get to be able to land. There yeah, it goes, to land there, so it goes to the runway. And we destroy the dreadnought, and uh, oh, this is like a bonus round. I forgot about this. That sounded just the same. That's really cool. And you got to fly back over the ship and try and avoid all of the obstacles again. Uh, okay, it's not so bad because once you get a screen in, you don't have to avoid all the, you know, the, all the things all the way back. It's just the first. Screen or two. Yeah, it doesn't sound quite the same there where the ship comes uh, out your little carrier thing at the beginning. It's just, it's like the timing thing, slightly off. But I think that's to be expected because one of the things that the um, author of these uh, Swinsids uh, says is that it's, I think it's clocked to work with a, an NTSC system. Um, so you'll probably find that it does sound slightly different, certainly on PAL systems. Anyway, let's uh, try another game. Some timing issues there. Definitely, that does not sound quite right. That is not right. To someone who's listened to this game a fair few times, I can tell uh, the timing is just really off. Hmm. 
try and make those chunkers. That bit doesn't sound too bad. I think one of the problems with this is when you start trying to emulate something like the said, you have to emulate the inaccuracies. And I suspect what's gone on here, um, Sw Swinkle's the guy who's done this, he's done a really good job. Um, but obviously, you know, there's potentially a couple of bugs in there, and that might be all it is, but I suspect that some of this is because the SID was never perfect. And as soon as you start trying to emulate something from set of requirements, you know, the, the, the original tech design, if you like, tech spec of the original SID, um, it can be a bit too perfect, and some of the bugs and flaws and analog type, you know, uh, systems and things that were there, um, didn't, don't always behave the way that they do on, on paper. Um, as soon as you start to emulate something, um, like I say, just going off a set of requirements, unless you quantify those um, uh, inaccuracies and, you know, in terms of the way it behaves, under various uh, you know, scenarios, you're not gonna you're not gonna get true one-to-one -one, you know um, representation of it. It's not gonna behave exactly the same. And I think that's what's going on here. I don't think it's just the timing thing. The timing thing's part of it. But yeah, some of the sounds just uh, some of the sounds coming out of certain channels just sound a little bit too sharp. There are a few artifacts there as well, and I think that's I attribute that to the timing. Let's give another game again. So I just thought I'd give Operation Wolf a try here. It's an interesting thing, and you know, I've been thinking a little bit more about this while this has been loading, and uh, you know, I can't help but feel that, like, you know, and I'm sure some other people are going to agree that when you think about the C64 SID, replacing it with um, you know something like this, a microprocessor or an FPGA or something like that, emulated hardware, isn't it a bit sacrilege? Um, you know, the, 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 what is C64 Wolf, you know, the SID is synonymous with being to C64. Um, and the minute you stop swap out the SID for an artificial SID, is it really still a 64? Yeah, you got a 64 processor in there and a VIC chip, but... Sounded okay, so let's try just in port three, two. Unless it's port three, then there is no port three. Trust me, I've looked. That sounds okay. Yeah, I can't tell the difference. Now. Hmm. Lacking a bit of bass there, actually. On oh, it's like filter loads or what. Let's just try the jumper. It's not that because that makes it louder. I've got a feeling that's uh, when you take it off. It's an 8580 mode. So far with this game, not much, uh, no, not much difference. Plenty of bikes driving past here, can't hear a thing. Yeah, that sounds the, the same to me. So I thought I'd just try LED Storm. I think this is another Tim Fallen. Got some good music on this.
they're sounding good. Not really any time and artifacts or anything going on there, but it doesn't sound as bassy. And I've got this in 6581 mode at the moment. Supremacy. Supremacy's got some pretty kick-ass music, so... I think we'll try wizardry. Something missing from that. It's missing a channel or something. There's supposed to be some sort of sound in the background.
Yeah, hard pressed again to tell the difference there. Didn't sound quite right on the title screen, but I think that could be because the title screen music is just a little bit different. Very close, if not identical to the actual set though. Fast and things in there. Sounds almost right to me. So, some ghosts and goblins again here. Uh, I've shown this on the some previous video, so it's a good uh, comparison. Almost the same there. It's about sort of this high pitch squeak, and it's just like a little bit longer, but it would be normal the same. Wow, 
major difference there. That's well screwed up. I would suggest that uh, the author of Swinsted, if he looks at this particular game, get the emulation on that right, work out whatever bug it is that's causing that, you've probably got most of the problem sorted. Because that is, uh, you know, evidently significantly wrong. That actually sounds worse than that uh, <laughs> damage said uh, the few videos back. The flange is just not working at all. It's like the re whatever registers associated with that is being reset at the wrong time or something. bursts of flange rather than lasting for the relevant amount of time. It's not quite the same either. So yeah, final comments here. Um, 10 out of 10 for the um, implementation. You know, it's, it's obviously not quite right. Um, a couple of bugs that Swinkles needs to fix there. Um, it's great for keeping these things uh, running for the next sort of 20 or 30 years. Um, perhaps when all these uh, SIDs have actually died. I'm sure they probably all will eventually. Um, they don't seem to last uh, forever. Um, it's one of the main chips to fail on these really, unfortunately. Um, but it's the age old discussion about emulation versus actual hardware. You know, it's, it's not, you know, if you've got a choice, yeah, you're going to want an actual SID in there. I wouldn't rush out and buy a Nano Swin SID um, or something similar, um, really, um, unless you've got a really good reason. Um, some people use SIDs in other sort of music equipment and stuff for producing music. You know, this is probably a good candidate for one of those where you want multiple SIDs in there and you can't actually get the uh, original chips. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully Swinkles will fix this one day. I don't know, you can see there's little rubber pins there, and I think that's for the JTAG. So I think I could probably reprogram this. I've got some JTAG programmers myself. Um, so I'll keep an eye out for firmware, and if he does do an update to this, I'll have a go at uh, reprogramming this and uh, do some more tests and things, and perhaps upload another video. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.